Let's look at creating tiling UVs, something that we'll be doing a lot for any kind of environment that we create. I've got a uh, small street level here, and I've got a street object that has a cobblestone texture applied to it. And if I look at that same object in my UV texture editor, I'll see that the UV layout is basically just a top-down projection, projecting from the Y direction, looking straight down onto my street. And my entire UV layout is laid into the 0 to 1 UV space. It's all in this top right square here. So when I look at my object in the viewport, it looks like the textures um, are tiling pretty well. But in order to get that effect, I've had to essentially pre-tile the texture. I've had to create a texture that has the same uh, asset tiling over and over and over in the actual pixels. And I'll see that not only is that very wasteful, we'll see that there's just tons of empty space that's not represented in my texture, uh, that's just not being touched by my UV layout. Um, so it's wasteful, but it, it also requires an absolutely huge texture to create any sort of decent resolution. And we definitely want to avoid this first because it's not efficient. To create this texture, I just repeated the tiling texture that I already have. So it was easy in that regard, but if I start to try and create a texture like this, uh, generally I'm going to resort to those kinds of tricks because as a person, as an artist, we'll tend to get bored of doing repetitive tasks. And my thought is we always let the computer do repetitive tasks for us. So let's take a look at another version of this same thing where I've got this same tiling street. But if I look at this in the UV texture editor, I'll see that the texture is just a fraction of the size of the other texture. So from a technical standpoint, I'm already way ahead. If I'm making video games, I need to be creating tiling textures like this. And if I'm doing pre-rendered stuff, we want to tile textures like this anyways, just to save memory at render time. Now, if I look at my UV layout in the UV editor, we'll see two things. First off, it's laid out very differently. I've divided into chunks, and those chunks tend to be in straight lines. And if we think about this, our textures are going to be arranged in straight lines because by default, the texture is going to be a square or it's going to be a rectangle. No one has invented circular file formats yet, so we're stuck using rectangles. And we're going to line our UVs up based on that rectangular shape. But the other thing to note is here's the uh, 0 to 1 space, the UV 0 to 1 space. We'll see that all of my texture UVs are laid out outside of the 0 to 1 space. My UV shells are much larger than the 0 to 1 space. And this is the key to creating tiling UVs for use in our environments. We need to realize that every side of the UV repeats what's next to it. And we can view this very explicitly by going to the image window in uh, the UV texture editor and we can go to image range and we have to go into the options of the image range and we just set these values to in the case of the minimums we want to go up to negative one for the maximums we want to go to two and now I'll see that the UVs stretch out on each side and I can increase these numbers as much as I want and the UV will just keep tiling over and over and over. So when we're thinking in terms of tiling textures and tiling UV sets, we want to remember that we are aiming to get away with as little texture as we possibly can. And we're trying to cover the maximum amount of polygon surface with the minimum of texture. So now let's talk about actually creating these kinds of UVs that we need. I'm going to switch back to the uh, non-tiling street. So we remember this one. When we look at it in the UV texture editor, it's just a top-down view. And I'm going to apply the other material to it, the uh, material that is assigned to the tiling object that has just this one square 
of texture assigned to it. And I'm going to set my UV range back to normal so that I'm only seeing that one square right in the middle. And that'll very definitely show us where that texture is. So when I look at my UVs applied to my surface, they're very small relative to the texture, and the surface uh, doesn't look correct. The easiest way to create these tiling UVs is to simply scale up the UVs that we have and oops, just grow them larger and larger until they get to the point where they look like what we need. So by scaling my UVs up, I'm just kind of replicating the idea of the tiling that texture and that'll give me the kind of performance that I need. The other way that I can do it is I'm just going to grab some faces here. Uh, so this stretch of faces right here and I'm going to create a new planar map on top of it and that'll be a planar projection from the top. And if I look at these UVs we'll see that uh, you know it stretches top to bottom but it doesn't stretch left to right. And so this technique is going to be especially useful if I have a texture that has defined edges. So let's imagine that on this texture I've painted darker areas along the edges to represent where the street hits the curb. So I only want the sides of the street to stretch that far. So I can stretch my UVs out so that my outside UVs will match the edges of that texture. And I can actually very explicitly define the position of these UVs by grabbing one of the rows of UVs and in my UV texture editor, I can go up to this box here and type in a number, in this case, zero. In this box here, I can type in a number. I happen to have actually nailed it, so that's quite unlikely. And it's also not very useful for a demonstration. So let me adjust it. I'll grab these outside edges. I'll set that back to zero. I'll grab these outside edges and I'll set it to one. And now my texture is lined up on the edges of my surface and all I have to do now is scale it vertically to control the placement of the cobblestones on this shape. So we have two options. We can create just a regular planar map of our entire surface or uh, something similar to that and then just grow those UVs or we can define our UVs uh, in straight line rows. So this is useful for textures that don't tile perfectly, textures that have an edge in one direction or another indicating where they meet with a surface or there's shadow or there's damage or something else on that texture.